This is Tradeflow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Tradeflow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Chinese firms are set to become a major trading force in the global liquefied natural gas market in coming years, thanks to liberalizations at home and recently signed long-term contracts for record amounts of LNG from U.S. suppliers. Setting their sights beyond the domestic market, state-run Sinopec Corp., Sinochem Group, privately controlled ENN Natural Gas County and China Gas are building up trading teams from Beijing, Singapore to London. China's push into the international LNG market comes two decades after it made a similar big splash in oil trading, and will put its firms in competition with established players like Shell, Total Energies and Vital. Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, UAE, could help to calm oil markets if they pumped more crude, the International Energy Agency, IEA, said on Friday, but prices rose after the watchdog highlighted deepening risks of volatility. Brent crude oil futures bounced back to near seven-year highs and hit a session peak of $92.75 a barrel after the Paris-based agency reported tight global supply and spare production capacity. These risks, which have broad economic implications, could be reduced if producers in the Middle East with spare capacity were to compensate for those running out, the Paris-based agency said in its monthly oil report. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Oil prices ended 3% higher on Friday at fresh seven-year highs as escalating fears of an invasion of Ukraine by Russia, a top energy producer, added to concerns over tight global crude supplies. Russia has massed enough troops near Ukraine to launch a major invasion, Washington said, as it urged all US citizens to leave the country within 48 hours. Britain also advised its nationals to leave Ukraine as Prime Minister Boris Johnson impressed the need for NATO allies to make it absolutely clear that there will be a heavy package of economic sanctions ready to go, should Russia invade Ukraine. Canadian oil companies exported a record amount of crude out of the US Gulf Coast at the end of 2021, a trend that should continue in coming months as tight international oil markets are in need of the nation's heavy, sour crude. These barrels are hitting the Gulf thanks to new pipeline connections and expansions that just came online last year, and are meeting surging global demand that has pushed oil prices to seven-year highs. Major producers, including the OPEC and allies including Russia, are struggling to raise output, along with traditional providers of heavy crude like Venezuela and Mexico. By contrast, Canada's oil sands production is at a record 3.5 million barrels a day. Most of that is exported to use in the United States, but a growing number of barrels are transiting the country to the U.S. Gulf Coast, where it is then re-exported. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. China's state planner said on Friday it and the market regulator will send teams to the commodity exchange and major ports to look into iron ore inventories and trading in the spot and futures markets due to recent unusual price moves. In a statement published on the National Development and Reform Commission's official WeChat account, the state planner said it would closely monitor iron ore market operations and price movements, and take effective measures to ensure market order. Gold prices jumped on Friday to a near two-month peak as concerns over surging inflation and escalating tensions between Russia and Ukraine lifted demand for the safe haven metal. Spot gold rose 1.6% to $1,855.17 per ounce by 2.27 p.m. Eastern Time, 1927 GMT, its highest level since November 19, and was poised for a weekly gain of 2.5%. U.S. gold futures settled up 0.3% at $1,842.10. A Russian attack on Ukraine could begin any day now and would likely start with an air assault, White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said on Friday. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. India's basmati rice exports plunged a fifth from a year ago to the lowest level in four years in 2021 as top buyer Iran slashed purchases after its rupee reserves dwindled, government and industry officials said. The country's basmati rice exports in 2021 fell 20% from a year ago to 4 million tonnes, the lowest since 2017, according to government data. 
Shipments to Iran, the biggest buyer of India's basmati rice, plunged 26% from a year ago to 834,458 tonnes, the data showed. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.